Imagine gazing up at the sky on a warm afternoon. Except, instead of a familiar yellow disc, our sun is concealed by a colossal spear. Not just any spear, but a technologically advanced, all-encompassing megastructure that harnesses every single photon and transforms it into usable energy. This is the grand vision of a Dyson Sphere, a theoretical construction so vast and awe-inspiring that it practically defies belief. But what if we could actually build one around our sun? How would we do it? And what would it mean for humanity? If it even remains humanity as we know it? Setting the stage. Before we dive into the technical hurdles, let's take a brief look back at where this idea originated. The term Dyson Sphere was popularized by the English-American physicist Freeman Dyson back in 1960. Dyson suggested that an advanced civilization on the level of what we now call a Type II civilization on the Kardashev scale would inevitably seek to harness the full energy output of its star. The quickest route to unlimited energy, Dyson reasoned, would be to encase the entire star in a massive structure, capturing virtually all its radiant energy. But Dyson's original paper was brief and theoretical. He never specified a single rigid sphere. Instead, he proposed a shell or swarm of solar collectors orbiting the star. Since then, science fiction has embraced the Dyson Sphere concept, from Star Trek to various novels, reinforcing this notion of a star fully enclosed by an alien civilization's engineering might. Today, it remains a symbol of near-omnipotent science and technology, an end goal for civilizations ambitious enough to harness energy at a cosmic scale. The Kardashev scale and our place in it. In order to build a Dyson Sphere, we first have to consider the sheer scale of what we're talking about. The Kardashev scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on how much energy it can use. A Type 1 civilization can harness all the energy available from its home planet. A Type 2 civilization can use the full power of its star. Finally, a Type 3 civilization can do the same, but for an entire galaxy. Right now, humanity is still hovering somewhere around a low Type 1. We burn fossil fuels, capture a fraction of solar power, and harness the energy of rivers and wind. But we are nowhere near controlling all energy on Earth. To move to Type 2, we'd need to harness roughly 3.8 into 10 to the power of 26 watts, the entire energy output of the sun. That figure is about 10 trillion times more power than what we currently consume. If the Earth alone is a drop in the cosmic bucket, then the entire sun is an unimaginably huge ocean. The Dyson Swarm Concept The idea of a solid rigid sphere encompassing the sun, a literal sheet shell around our star, is mesmerizing. But as futuristic as it sounds, such a structure would be almost impossible to build for one critical reason. The gravitational stress and material strength requirements would be beyond anything we could conceive of today. Any known material, no matter how sturdy, would be subject to enormous tensile forces trying to tear it apart. Furthermore, the interior of such a sphere would endure ceaseless bombardment by solar radiation, creating intense heat and pressure. Therefore, what Dyson actually suggested, and what modern scientists consider plausible, was not a single monolithic sphere, but a Dyson swarm. Picture billions or even trillions of small satellites or solar collectors, each placed at just the right distance to gather the maximum possible sunlight without crashing into one another. Over time, these satellites would create a thick shell, though not a continuous solid surface around the sun. The advantage? You don't need impossibly strong materials. You can build and launch each module independently. You can start small and gradually expand, harnessing more and more energy as your swarm grows. The unfathomable materials challenge. But if you think building skyscrapers or transcontinental pipelines on Earth is challenging, multiply that feeling by cosmic proportions. Where would we even get the raw materials for a Dyson swarm? Harvesting materials from Earth alone would be incredibly costly and risk irreversible damage to the planet's environment. This is why many theoretical plans look outward. Mercury, for instance, with its close orbit to the Sun, is rich in metals and other elements. In some Dyson Sphere proposals, Mercury is dismantled for raw resources. 
systematically converting its matter into billions of solar-collecting satellites. Sure, tearing apart an entire planet sounds like science fiction, bordering on madness. But from the vantage point of a highly advanced civilization, this might be the only practical way to gather enough building material for such a gargantuan project. We would also need a means of transporting these materials. That might involve building space elevators, mass drivers, or using other futuristic approaches to shuttle raw metals to orbit assembly lines. On top of that, we need a self-sustaining network of factories and automated robotics to manufacture solar panels on an astronomical scale. The sheer logistics of this endeavor would require an unfathomable level of technological sophistication, one that likely dwarfs anything we can imagine today. Construction Timescale – Eons or Accelerated Building a Dyson Swarm, or Sphere, would not happen in a single human lifetime. Even at a breakneck pace, working around the clock, the timescale is so vast that it might stretch across centuries, or even millennia. Yet, advanced civilizations that contemplate such megastructures may not be bound by our human constraints. If an artificially intelligent system takes the reins of manufacturing and resource extraction, everything might happen far faster than we'd expect under purely human labor. There are speculative notions about self-replicating robots, sometimes called von Neumann probes, that could theoretically mine asteroids and other planetary bodies. Once set loose, they could multiply exponentially, using raw resources to build even more probes. Over time, these exponential growth cycles might drastically shrink a Dyson Swarm's construction timeline. Still, we're talking about millions or billions of satellites, each needing to be safely positioned in orbit around the Sun, avoiding collisions and ensuring maximum energy capture. It's a cosmic-level engineering ballet that demands precise choreography. Energy Gains and Civilization Transformation Let's assume we somehow manage to build this Dyson Swarm. What's in it for us? The amount of energy we tap into is nothing short of extraordinary. Instead of being reliant on the trickle of solar energy that hits Earth, we'd harness nearly the entire output of the Sun. Enough to power trillions of human lives, advanced artificial intelligences, massive computational projects, off-world colonies, terraforming efforts, and more. Humanity, or whatever our descendants become, would graduate to a Type II civilization, where energy scarcity no longer limits our ambitions. With such a colossal power supply, we could imagine a future where resource conflicts and energy wars are problems of the past. Industries that are currently limited by energy costs, like large-scale space travel, climate engineering, or interstellar exploration become feasible. We could build Earth-like habitats throughout the solar system, engineer new biospheres, and perhaps even experiment with faster-than-light communication or advanced quantum computing. The Dyson Swarm would be our cosmic battery pack, enabling us to do just about anything energy-wise that we dare to dream. The impact on the solar system and beyond. However, all this energy harnessing is not without consequences. Although Dyson spheres are often imagined as capturing all the sun's radiant output, in reality energy can't just vanish, it's merely transformed. Much of that solar energy would ultimately be radiated as waste heat. This implies that if a Dyson sphere or swarm fully enclosed the sun, the outer shell might glow in infrared frequencies. In fact, some astronomers scan the skies for such thermal signatures, searching for advanced alien civilizations that may have already built Dyson spheres around their own stars. Moreover, overshadowing the Earth permanently would create interesting implications for our planet's ecology. If large portions of the Sun's radiation are captured before reaching Earth, the environment would change drastically. Of course, a Dyson swarm doesn't need to block out all the sunlight, and presumably, we'd design it in a way that still allows for Earth's normal climate, if we even still need Earth's original environment at that point. Perhaps we'd rely on artificially produced sunlight for agriculture or day-to-day -day life. Civilization itself might migrate off-planet, living in space colonies that are integrated into the Dyson Swarm. Earth might be preserved as a historical site or natural reserve. Potential catastrophes and technological risks. A project of this scale carries enormous risks. Imagine a single satellite in the Dyson Swarm going off course. It could trigger collisions, 
debris fields, or chain reactions, potentially compromising large sections of the structure. Additionally, the engineering needed to keep each module in stable orbit is daunting. Any miscalculation could send satellites spiraling into the sun or slingshotted out of the solar system. There's also the danger of the civilization behind the Dyson Sphere losing control over its creation. If artificial intelligence is in charge of the assembly, we'd need ironclad safeguards to prevent an existential meltdown. And let's not forget the cosmic hazards, massive solar flares, coronal mass ejections, or shifts in the sun's activity over millions of years. If the Dyson Swarm can't adapt, the entire infrastructure might be jeopardized. On timescales of billions of years, the sun will eventually expand into a red giant, engulfing the inner planets. Would a Dyson Sphere remain stable or relevant through all stages of stellar evolution? Philosophical and Existential Implications Beyond the pure engineering, a Dyson Sphere touches on profound questions about what it means to be human. Such an achievement would fundamentally alter our relationship with nature, possibly making us cosmic gardeners rather than mere observers. We no longer be bound to a single fragile planet. The ability to manipulate star scale energies might give us nearly godlike power, both to create and to destroy. How would our societies, politics, or even our moral and ethical frameworks evolve under such capability? Some scientists argue that the quest for a Dyson Sphere is the logical next step in civilization's growth, a testament to life's ability to spread beyond Earth and use the cosmos as its canvas. Others warn that attempts to harness such power could lead to self-destruction, with mistakes turning catastrophic at a cosmic scale. Ethical debates arise about dismantling entire planets like Mercury. Do we have the right to consume celestial bodies for our own ends? Will advanced AI or post-human entities, rather than humans, be the ones actually shaping these cosmic scale engineering feats? So what if we built a Dyson Sphere around the Sun? On one hand, it could spell the dawn of a new era for humanity, a civilization freed from energy scarcity, capable of wonders we can barely imagine. It would be a statement of cosmic ambition, proof of our potential to evolve beyond planetary confines and become interstellar creators. On the other hand, the challenges are as immense as the sun itself. Staggering resource requirements, unimaginable construction timelines, the perilous potential for catastrophic failure, and the moral quandaries of transforming entire planets into raw material. Yet, every step we take in exploring solar energy, space mining, and advanced robotics is a small move in that direction. Whether we recognize it or not, even if a full Dyson Sphere remains a distant vision, partial megastructures or Dyson Swarms could well be within the grasp of a future more capable version of humanity or its successors. Until then, the idea remains a beacon of what might be possible, inviting us to dream bigger, to push the boundaries of technology, and to confront the cosmic potential and peril that come hand in hand with becoming a truly spacefaring species. And that's the tantalizing promise and cautionary tale of building a Dyson Sphere around our sun. Let us know in the comments, do you think humanity will ever reach the point of constructing a Dyson Swarm or Sphere? If we do, how do you see it shaping our future? Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more explorations on the wonders and mysteries of our universe. Until next time, stay curious.